Hello and welcome to this demonstration of ANSYS AIM. Today we will be performing a transient thermal analysis of a frying pan that is heated on a stove with natural convection. The heat flow into the pan will be 250 watts with a convection coefficient of 20 watts per meter squared degrees Celsius, which will act as the natural convection of the pan. What we want to find out is the time it takes for the max temperature to reach 100 degrees Celsius and approximately when steady state is reached. With AIM pulled up, we will now begin our analysis. We will do a transient thermal analysis, and to do this, we will select the simulation process template, Thermal. AIM will now start creating the template, and to do so, we first will need to import existing geometry, We'll uncheck the allow model editing because we won't need that. And then since we're doing a transient analysis, we want to do a time dependent calculation type. Since there is only one part to our analysis, we will turn off detect contact automatically as well. With all these options selected, we are now ready to create the simulation process. AIM is now asking us to select the geometry. We'll select the geometry up here, frying pan, and then select open. Now that we have our geometry imported, we'll want to select our unit system. I'll go up into the project menu, go down to units, and select the metric system. Next, we will go to meshing. I'll go ahead and click on Mesh in the Simulation Process data panel. We can use predefined settings, but let's go down into the global sizing. I'm going to set it to curvature, which will help with meshing for circular geometry. For instance, these fillet radii on my frying pan. I'll now go, go ahead and push the blue lightning bolt which will update and gen start generating my mesh. Now that the mesh is finished, you can see that along those curvatures, the mesh is more refined. This is to better capture that geometry. Next, we will want to set up our boundary conditions or thermal conditions for our analysis. We'll go down to the view panel and click on the Physics tab. From here, we can go up into the Physics Data panel and set our analysis settings. We are performing a time-dependent analysis, which means a transient thermal analysis. And for duration, I'll go ahead and type in about 30 minutes. That should get us, give us plenty of time to see when steady state will occur. That's 1800 seconds. Our physics region is our pan, which is already being defined. And now we will need to define our material assignments. I'll click on material assignments. And currently it's set to structural steel. I actually want to set it to cast iron. I can either type in cast iron or I can go find it in the list here. I'll select cast iron and that will apply that material property to my frying pan. If I want to see or check on the material properties, I can click on this drop down arrow next to the cast iron. This is where I will verify my material properties. I'll next want to go back to the physics tab and continue down the list of items that I need. Next, I'll be adding my thermal boundary conditions. So I can click on this add button and what we want first is heat flow. So I'll select that. The heat flow data panel will pull up and it'll ask me to define a location. I can go and click in the box then, since the stovetop will be underneath my pan, my pan, I can select the bottom there. 
To confirm this selection, I'll hit the plus sign next to the location. I'll next need to define the magnitude of the heat flow. This will be 200, 250 watts. I also want to apply convection to my model. So I can click next step, add, I go to solid thermal conditions, and then I'll select convection. So I want to basically apply my convection to everywhere else in the model except for where I applied the heat flow. So to do this, I can right click and then use the select all feature. I don't want all the faces to be selected. So I'll go ahead and deselect the face where the heat flow is applied. To confirm the selection, again, I'll go back up to the plus sign and add the selected entities. The heat transfer coefficient that I'll apply is 20 watts per meter squared degrees Celsius. And then the convection temperature, which is basically your environment temperature, I'll just set at room temperature, which is 22 degrees Celsius. I can, I can then go back to my physics tab and everything else I'll leave as default. I am now ready to solve my analysis. To solve, I can right click on this physics tab and select update. Now that the solution is done solving, I can go to my results section. I'll click on the results tab. In the results tab, you'll notice that there are already predefined results. By clicking the drop down arrow next to the results in the data panel, I'll see that there's a contour plot here. This is the contour of a temperature plot. I can go ahead and click on that. And you'll notice that it says that it's out of date. What I want to do next is just click the lightning bolt to evaluate these results. I can now take a look at my contour plots. You can see that the maximum temperature is slightly above 150 degrees Celsius. One of the objects that we had in the analysis was to determine about what time the temperature reached above 100 degrees Celsius. We can click the right arrow besides the calculated maximum and choose to plot this. I'll go over to the chart and expand it so that it has a full window view. So now we can find at what point the temperature reached 100 degrees Celsius. We'll go over to 100 degrees Celsius and follow that datum all the way to where it crosses our curve. This is at about 300 seconds. We can also determine when our analysis reaches steady state by looking at when our temperature plot flattens out. This is at about 1500 seconds. This concludes the ANSYS-AIM transient thermal analysis. Thank you and goodbye.